Okay, so let's consider a Darcy's experiment. Okay, so we have a cylinder and there is 1D flow occurring because there is a reservoir on this side and a reservoir on this side, let's say. Okay, now we have an area that is the area pi r squared, that is the area of the cylinder, the cross-sectional area of flow of the cylinder, right? As we have discussed before, and we have the length. Now we know that k is equal to q, which is the measured flow rate through the system, divided by i, which is delta h over l. Delta h is the distance between the two water reservoirs, right? And A is the area. So all this we is just a review of what we have seen so far. Now, we said that K was in units, or oh, it's reported in units of centimeter per second, like a velocity, but it's not a velocity. What we would like to know is what is the fluid velocity as it, as it flows through the soil, okay? Now, if you answer that the velocity is k, you are wrong, because remember that k is the proportionality between q and, and ia. It's just a proportion, just a ratio of these two. It's not a velocity. Now, <clears throat> the velocity, the true velocity, it's really, I shouldn't say it's a true velocity, but the, the actual velocity calculation is done, is done this way. You know that the velocity inside a tube is equal to Q, right, divided by A, okay? So, Q is the, uh, the flow rate that is measured, right, and A is the area of flow, correct? KIA, that's Q, over A. The A's cancel, KI. So now we have the actual velocity. It's k times i. The velocity is equal to a parameter that has units of velocity times a parameter that doesn't have units. Therefore, everything comes out okay because then velocity has units of centimeter per second like it should have because remember i doesn't have units. Okay? Now, that is called the Darcy velocity. Okay? Now, do you see any problem with this velocity? Does it really capture the flow of the fluid through the soil? You can press pause at this time and think about it. And now we're going to answer. There is something weird with this velocity, and the reason is that the area that we use, remember this is the definition of a tube, the area, which is the area of this cylinder or tube, is the total area. So if we were to look in here, we would basically see the cylinder, right? And we would see the particles in there. Let's say they are, you know, in this case they are kind of big particles. These are the soil particles, right? Now, is it is it reasonable to say that flow, uh, the fluid flows through this whole area? The answer is no, because fluid doesn't flow through particles. It only flows through the pore space. Right? I hope that you can see what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm basically shading the area not comprised by particles. That's the void area. Those are the voids. So the true area of flow is that shaded area. Okay, the area available for flow is smaller than the actual area of the cylinder because the particles occupy some of that uh, volume, of course, right? So how would you define, how would you determine that true area so that we can define a velocity that is the flow rate 
that is measured divided by that true area or the area available for flow. Well, let's look at this drawing. What is the percentage of voids in this whole area? What would you say? Maybe about 35? So the whole circle, that's 100% of the area. And the shaded part, if we collect all the shaded part, that's about 30% of, of the whole circle, right? Of the whole area. I'm guessing about 30%, okay? Now, what, what have we just calculated there by saying the percentage of voids over the total area or total uh, space? Do you remember that phase relationship? We have a phase relationship that is volume of voids divided by volume, total. I'm going to write it here. Volume of voids divided by volume. What is that? What is that phase relationship? That is the porosity, right? Now that's a ratio of volumes. Same thing applies to area, if you want to see it in 2D, two dimensions. So, this area is actually N times that area. That is the total area, right? The porosity times the total area just like the porosity times the total volume gives you the area of the voids in this case the volume of the voids if you use this equation so n times v is equal to v sub v same thing n times a is equal to a sub f or a sub v we could call it a sub v the area of the voids okay i i, I use f for flow so q is q that's just the measured value that doesn't change right and then we have AF is equal to N times A. A is the total area, pi r squared. So what we get is KI A over NA. This cancels. KI divided by N. This velocity is the pore velocity. Okay? We call this one the pore velocity. You see that? Yes. The pore velocity. So, there are two velocities. We're going to put a little d here for Darcy. Darcy velocity and pore velocity. The Darcy velocity is somewhat of a fictitious velocity because it is, uh, it is, it is using an area that is not the true area available for flow. The pore velocity is a little bit more correct, let's say, because it uses the area, estimated area available for flow. Now in reality, the pore velocity or the fluid velocity actually varies from pore to pore because pores are constantly changing in size as you propagate or travel across the soil, through the soil, right? So locally, at a very small scale, the velocity varies within pores. But generally, the one that is used most to determine the actual velocity of the fluid as it flows through the pore space is the pore velocity. Which one is larger? Well, the area available for flow is smaller than the area total. If you divide by a small number, if you divide Q by a small number, you'll get a larger number than if you divide Q by a, let's say, large, large number. So VP is always larger than VD.